Dr. Karen Goldberg with the Department of Geology at K-State. And today I'm going to invite you to come join me on a field trip to learn about the rocks around Manhattan and how we can look at rocks and get information about uh, variations of sea level and climate change. So come with me and let's get started. along K-177 just south of Manhattan and I would like to, to point to you uh, that on this road cut we can see different colors, different kinds of rocks. So if you look at the base here at the bottom you can see this colorful uh, layers and then uh, in the middle you see this um, gray layer that is sticking out and at the very top it's more yellowish color uh, uh, what we see there and then once again we see the gray. So the reason why we see different colors and some layers stick out more than others is that because they are made of different rocks. So here what we have are sedimentary rocks and the sedimentary rocks they are formed uh, by the accumulation of particles, little particles. That, this can be some sand grains or some mud flakes or some fossils, uh, little pieces of shells. So uh, when we look at these rocks, uh, for example, in the bottom part here, you see these different colors in this um, uh, surface that is sloping. And you can see the details, it's sloping because it's very easy to uh, break down. And the reason for that is that this is all made of mud. This is a, a lithified mud. We call this rock type a shale. So it's basically a mud that has become rock. Now, all of these shales, they were formed uh, by the deposition on a, a plain, like a flood plain by a river or something like that. And the reason why they have different colors is that we can tell by these different colors of the kind of climate in which they were deposited. When we form soils in very arid climate, when there is a lot of it's very hot and very dry, uh, the typical soil that forms is very uh, rich in calcium carbonate. So if you look on this part down here, you can see that uh, this layer is very red and it has these blobs that are sticking out. These blobs are uh, carbonate nodules. They are formed typically when the climate is very, very dry because the carbonate is a soluble rock. If there is a lot of water, it flushes away the carbonate and we do not have the nodules. Then if you keep going up, we see that the rock color changes to a purple with some greenish and at the very top of the shales we see uh, that it's very flaky still but very green. So the reason for that is that the minerals in the soils are different from what we had down here. So this kind of uh, a shale is formed in a soil that is more humid, it's wetter. So when we look at this uh, part of the road cut, we can already see that the rocks are telling us that during the formation of this soil, there has been a climate change. It has changed from more arid, drier climate to more humid, where the, gray, the green part is. So this is something that Wherever we go in Manhattan, we see the same pattern. The bottom part of the shale is always reddish and rich, rich in this carbonate nodules. And then as we move up, uh, it gets greenish and this was deposited in a much wetter climate. 
Now, uh, one of the things that we we uh, have to understand is that sedimentary rocks they are deposited horizontally. So imagine a stack of pancakes. When you're making pancakes, the very first pancake that you flip, you put on a plate, and then it's going to be on the bottom of the pile of pancakes. So you keep flipping pancakes and stacking them up. So whatever pancake is at the very top of the pile was the latest one that you made, right? So the oldest pancake is at the bottom, and the youngest pancake in your cooking is at the top. The same thing happens with sedimentary rocks. So when we look at a sedimentary pile like that, we know that these layers down here, they are older than those layers up there. This is how it works. We superimpose layer by layer by layer as we are accumulating the sediment. So the moment that we look at this succession here, going from the arid uh, paleosols or ancient soils to the green ancient soils there, we can see the changing climate through time because this was formed first and that green layer there was formed later. So we can just looking at this shales uh, recognize a climate change from more dry to more wet, from drier to wetter during this period of time that took to deposit this shale. Now, we are not talking about a climate change uh, that happened uh, over the course of a few years or even centuries. We're talking about thousands of years or even tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years because it takes a very long time to accumulate a thick succession of soil like that. So now we have climbed up on the road cut to show you the top part of this uh, rock succession. So as we we were talking before, um, the, the rocks here look different from the shales that we were observing down there. So here you can see the thick layers of this yellowish rock, uh, and in some parts uh, you see this vertical breakage, these vertical fractures um, in this rock. And you can see that this looks much harder than the shales down there because the shales are all flaky and eroding away. Here you have a very clear wall. You have a firm ledge that is formed uh, by the erosion of this rock. So these are limestones. It's a different kind of uh, uh, sedimentary rock. And the way we form the limestones is by the accumulation of carbonate particles. Rather than being mud particles as the shales, we have several bits and pieces of carbonate material. And most of this carbonate material are bits and pieces of shells. You can see here on this uh, pieces of rock that have broken off this wall that this is packed with shells. And these shells are uh, of brachiopods. Brachiopods are this um, invertebrates. They are little things that have two shells that close together. And when the invertebrates or the, br the brachiopods die, the shells open up and you can see the shells separating. So this is basically a hash of shells that is forming this limestone. The important thing about that is also that brachiopods, they only live in the ocean. They are marine animals. So we know that this rock was formed in a shallow ocean. So this is formed in the sea. Now, the shells that we were, that we were looking at down there, they are ancient soils. So they are formed, for example, in an environment like this on land. But here on the top of the pile, we see that um, we have uh, uh, marine fossils accumulating to form these limestones. So that means that back 300 million years ago, when these rocks were forming, there was a shallow sea that covered Kansas in this very location. 
Here we can see a reconstruction of what North America looked like 200 million years ago. Kansas, uh, located very close to the equator, was partially covered by the sea and northeastern Kansas uh, lay along coastal regions. So from there where it was land to here that is sea at this moment, we have a variation of the sea level because we were standing 300 million years ago on a margin of this shallow sea. And in this margin, when the sea level was low, we had exposure and it was land, so the soils could form. Then later on, when the sea level rose, went up, all this area was flooded by the sea. And with the sea flooding this region, the brachiopods that live in the sea were able to populate and uh, form accumulations of shells as they died that later on that lithified to form this limestone. See, so these are fossiliferous limestone and they tell us a very clear story that the sea was covering Kansas was around Manhattan during this period of time. Now, the other thing that we can see here is this part where if you look in the details, we see this uh, black blobs, irregular blobs, and this part that has these features is very, very hard, difficult to break, and it forms these uh, vertical fractures. So this dark material that is replacing uh, the limestones is what we call flint. Flint is quartz, but it's very finely crystalline. So tiny, tiny quartz crystals uh, are forming these nodules. And because quartz is a very hard material, it is very hard to break these rocks once the quartz covers and replaces the original limestone. So the replacement by flint which is another name for uh, chert, microcrystalline quartz, is what gives the Flint Hills its name. So the reason why we see this hilly landscape is that instead of being eroded down, where there is this flint, this chert, microcrystalline quartz, it's hard to erode away because it's so hard. So we have a higher topography where there is the flint. So this is why uh, uh, our region is called the Flint Hills. It's hills formed by the presence of flint in these rocks, uh, avoiding the erosion and flattening of this region. So uh, already we told a story about the climate change looking at the different colors uh, of the shale. And here we can also tell a story about fluctuating sea levels. We can say that uh, the land was exposed. It was land during the formation of the shales down here. And up here, we had the entire region being flooded by the sea uh, with the accumulation of the brachiopods that formed this limestone. So if you look in the detail, all the rocks around Manhattan show this interbedding of colorful shales and yellowish or light green limestones and then on top of it shales again and then it comes back to limestone so we have this uh, pattern the cyclic repetition of shales and limestones and shales and limestones that is telling us that the sea level was fluctuating very frequently very often. Every time the sea level went down, we had the accumulation of soils that formed the shale. When the sea level went up, it flooded the region, we had the accumulation of the shells that formed the limestones, then it went back down again, and we formed another layer of shale on top of the limestone, so on and so forth. So the rocks around here are very interesting because they are telling us the story about fluctuating sea levels and changing climate due time. I hope you enjoyed our journey 
across the Kansas Ocean 300 million years ago. It was a pleasure for me to take you around to look at the rocks around Manhattan and I hope to see you again uh, in the future. Please feel free to uh, email me or contact me if you shall have any questions or if you need any additional information. Until next time, bye!